from the really creative title sequence to the beautiful costumes, the perfect casting, the gorgeous soundtrack, the slightly chaotic but very engaging narrative, Romance on the High Seas is a beautiful film and I'm not just saying that because I'm in love with Doris Day. I actually didn't think when I was looking into this that Doris Day would be in this a lot. She's not top build. However, she actually is in it quite a lot and it is a beautiful film. This was released originally in 1948, directed by Michael Curtis and Bilby Barclay and stars alongside others Doris Day, Janice Page, Jack Carson and done before and this is an incredibly fun film i will say that the beginning maybe the first 10 minutes or so were a little bit dull i thought i don't think i'm going to get on with this it's not going to be that great but actually it turned out to be fantastic and maybe one of my top 10 favorite doris day films maybe i'm not going to hold myself to that i'll read the description from my mdb but i'll probably talk a little bit around this description without giving any spoilers because the plot is quite not intense, but there's a lot, there, there are many dimensions to it. So the description says, Romantic misunderstandings about, abound when spouses suspect each other of being unfaithful and a nightclub singer takes a cruise under a false identity. So basically, Elvira Kent is supposed to go on a cruise with her husband, Michael, played by Janice Page and Don DeFore, respectively. But Elvira suspects that her husband is having an affair. So instead, she gives her cruise tickets and some spending money to Georgia Garrett, Doris Day, who is a struggling singer. She's not got the money for this kind of trip. She instantly jumps at the chance on the condition that she pretends to be Elvira Kent and, you know, stays in her cabin and doesn't associate with people as far as possible. However, Michael Kent also suspects that Elvira is having an affair and he sends detective Peter Virgil onto that cruise to see if his wife is having an affair while Elvira is actually on dry land trying to spy on her husband. I hope you're still with me. Obviously this is not going to be straightforward. Georgia and Peter, Georgia as Elvira Kent, Peter thinking she is Elvira, begin a very fond acquaintance and their relationship develops, and it's all about who's going to find out whose true identity. Nobody knows what the other person is up to, and everything is scattered. And then a few other things are thrown into the mix further into the narrative, and you have to pay attention to keep up with what's going on and who's meant to be who and who's doing what. But it's not an intense narrative. It's fun, it's lively, it's very funny. Very, very funny. We have some very comedic um, supporting cast. Um, maybe Oscar Levant can't be considered supporting. He's a bit more than that, but he plays a character called Oscar. And I thought his performance was brilliant. I also liked S.Z. Sakal. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He played Uncle Laszlo Laszlo. Brilliant character. Um, the ship's doctor played by Eric Blore. Ridiculous character. Great fun. And somebody else who I really loved in this, and he was a, a true scene stealer for all the right reasons, is John Burks, uh, or perhaps Burkas. Um, he plays a character who is simply called The Drunk. He is a non-speaking role, technically an extra, but he is in this scene for about five minutes and he's on screen the entire time. And it's at the bar. And I'm not going to say anything more than that, but you'll know exactly which scene I mean when you see it. And he was just fantastic. And, you know, I've, I've never been that captivated by somebody who has such a, a minor role to play in a film's narrative. I, I loved him. Absolutely brilliant. The soundtrack is gorgeous. Obviously, this is Doris Day. We get a lot of beautiful music. Um, Favourites are It's Magic and Put Him in a Box, Tie Him with a Ribbon, which I love. I loved that song before I saw this film because I have a few Doris Day albums and that's on one of them. Really, really beautiful. I do think that towards the end, and I won't spoil what happens, but I think towards the end it got a little bit over the top. Um, there are a lot of very fantastical situations in this film, but I think towards the top it kind of started to become almost farcical in nature, but not enough that it made me I don't know, lose faith in the film or anything. It was just a bit weird, but ultimately I was satisfied that with the way it concluded. I really liked the way it developed. The costumes were incredible, particularly the first dress. 
that Doris Day wears on the cruise ship. It is stunning. Beautiful film. As I said, got off to a slightly rocky start. Wasn't really sure I'd get on board with it, if you excuse the pun. But personally, I stuck with it, got past the first 10 minutes, realised it was actually going to be an incredible film. As I said, could well be a contender for one of my all-time favourite Doris Day films. If you haven't seen any of her films, then this is a fair decent one to start with. But if you have seen some and you just want a recommendation for another, Romance on the High Seas is spectacular.